Somebody may be watching this interview right now, Mark, and say, well, I've worked in healthcare, and I know that AIDS is a statistical issue and 130 factors. I just work in human resources, or I just work in marketing at my company. Like, you're talking about stuff that's rocket science. I, I am just a human resource manager. Can you give me an example from a functional area at a at a Fortune 100 company, such as human resources or marketing, where design of experiments can be applied? Absolutely. The one that comes to mind, Mike, comes from Boston Fleet Bank, which is now part of Bank of America. This was done, I think, 2004, maybe maybe eight, nine years ago, uh, done by a young lady and her team in the HR department at Boston Fleet Bank. Their problem was turnover. Turnover was the response. That's the variable that was creating problems. When you have high turnover rates, that's expensive. It costs mm -hmm. money to bring people in, to hire people, train them up to yep. speed. And worse than that was uh, sometimes an unmeasurable thing like these, these folks were, the, the high turnover rate was in areas where these folks were inter interfacing with the customers, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's tough stuff. So, right. uh, you know, I know DOE, but I, I'm not an HR person, but these guys know HR. So these guys said, said what are the factors that could be contributing to these high turnover rates. Now, I probably wouldn't have come up with stuff like this, but um, time since last promotion, you know, educational history. I might have I might have gone to the educational history thing, job stability history, uh, what is the local unemployment rate at the time somebody left, what is the local employment alternatives, what's the company's market share. Then you've got uh, the company policies, like uh, what's the lateral upward mobility climate like, uh, the layoff climate. Uh, there are all kinds of factors. All of those things are factors. Well, guess what? They investigated 16 or 17 factors, and they narrowed them down to two or three that were really critical that allowed them to change their, their policies on supervision, supervisor stability. That's not their mental stability. That's how long they were in grade. That was that turned out to be a very, very important factor. So it changed their policy uh, that supervisors would stay in their positions longer. They would have more training for their supervisors. And uh, one of the other factors was, that was important, statistically significant anyway, was how they recruited these people. Did they get them through an agency or were they hired based on internal recommendations? Mm -hmm. And uh, the internal recommendations, folks, they tended to stay longer. So those factors started coming out. Every time they had, and the beauty of the model that they developed was they got data. Every time there was somebody leave the company, they got data. So they knew what the factor values were at the time somebody left, and they could affiliate that with that particular individual. And they rolled that back into their model, continuously updating their model so they could predict and find what the factors, if there's any change in the factors that are really affecting the output. Yeah. So actually that example, Mike, was so uh, so impressive that it was written up in Harvard Business Review. So people can go to HBR and they can read about that particular DOE.